Hoyt Buck, a young blacksmith from Kansas, produced the first buck knife in 1902. Each knife was crafted by hand using worn out file blades. In World War II, buck knives became more and more popular until Hoyt and his wife Daisy, as well as his eldest son L, set up a shop in 1945 in San Diego, California. After the death of his father, L. Buck revolutionized the knife industry in 1964 with the model 110 Folding Hunter. And that's what this review is all about. A review of a legend, the Buck 110 Folding Hunter. With this said, let's start the review. Buck is using his 420 HC stainless steel that they have been perfected in heat treating and manufacturing over years with a rock hole hardness of 58 RC the blade shape is a clip point design as you can see here versatile and useful in any situation with a very nice tip The blade thickness is 0.12 inches, strong and still thin enough to cut like a razor. The blade length of the 110 Folding Hunter is 3 and 3 quarter inch or 9.5 cm, perfect for any outdoor activity or hunting purpose. It weighs 7.2 ounces or 205 grams, which is quite heavy for a pocket knife. Closed length is 4.9 inches or 12.5 centimeters. The locking mechanism is a lock back that secures the blade when open. There is no side to side or up and down plate play. And with this longer handle, you don't touch the locking or let's say release bar of this lock with your palm. Which is quite a problem when you have the release bar in the middle of the handle because when you press really hard down on the knife you may disable the lock and the blade can fold up on your fingers. The detent of the blade is also very good. As you can see the knife sucks the blade right in and holds it there securely. The handle material is Macassar Ebony Diamond Wood, secured with brass pins. This pin here, which is stainless steel, is the pivot point of the back spring. All others are pins for the handle. The brass bolsters are made out of one thick piece of brass and milled out to fit perfectly with the handles. As you can see the liner that goes right between the handle material and the gap there is also brass. So you have one thick piece of brass milled out for the handles and that's why this sucker is that heavy. But it is also a great fitting handle in your hand. It feels good, it feels smooth, no sharp edges. And tell you what, 
I definitely prefer the one without the finger grooves. There is another one on the market which has some finger grooves right there. But if you don't have the right hands or using different kind of grips, it's definitely much better to have this handle that fits definitely also your hand. The shallow hollow grind is providing you with the sharpness of a razor. A nail nick in the blade is for opening the knife and stands up to the paragraph 42a German law. Including a heavy duty genuine leather sheath with a solid snap and the belt loop This knife is a companion for every single day of your life. Trusted and proven for the last 50 years. So happy birthday Buck 110 and congrats on your 50th anniversary. Well, while the knife is totally produced in the USA, the sheath is coming from Mexico. But this sheath here is built like a tank. I mean the stitches are awesome, the leather is really thick and Mexico is really known for their really good leather products. Beautiful sheath. And does hold the knife very securely. Well my buck 110 is made in 2007 and has seen quite a lot of use in the last seven years and is still functioning like on the first day I got it. To check out which year your Buck 110 has been manufactured, take a close look on the blade stamping, on the blade marking and compare the sign with this list here or on Buck's website. You may can see the staining points on the blade so even that this is a stainless steel it still will get some stains here and there but that's no big issue for me because I do my best to clean the knife to sharpen the knife and to keep it clean to keep it dry and to keep it oiled as good as possible as said before, seven years of hard use makes this blade staining a little. That's no big deal for me. If you don't like it to stain, don't use it. Also the brass will get some patina. Well, I've cleaned it off as good as possible. But patina makes the knife very personal. As you can see, the knife has seen some action and every single patina or every single staining point is part of the history of my personal knife. This solid bastard is ready for decades of hard use. Thanks for joining me, Mike out.